Hi there, Sandy McIver here, and thanks for dropping in. Today, I'm going to be sharing a watercolor layered die cut card, and I'm using the Hero Arts City Window Fancy and the Trifold Edge City dies. This set of dies has three different dies in it. There's a short city, there's a tall city, and then the final one is a kind of a silhouette for the park in front of the city. So we're going to be using uh, the tall city and the front silhouette piece in front and behind the city window fancy die. Once we get them watercolored, we'll be stacking them in front and behind like I'm showing you here in the image. Of course, there's going to be a little bit of trimming to do as well. And these are cut out of Canson watercolor paper, 140 pound cold pressed. For my watercoloring medium, I'm going to be using the Hero Arts liquid watercolors today. They come in these adorable little bottles and you can unscrew the lid to an eyedropper to transfer the liquid to a palette. And they're all named and tagged on each one of them so it's really easy to see what your colors are as well as the glass being clear, of course. I've swatched mine out on an eight and a half by 11 piece of watercolor paper, which I store in a binder with my other swatches. And I'm missing a few colors, and that's why there's a big space showing. You will also need some paint brushes. I used a two and a six, and you also need some clean water. I've protected my surface with my waffle mat, and I've also got a couple of palettes that I'll be bringing in because I like to add a little bit of water to each of the colors. Over to the right, you see I also have a craft mat and some paper towels so I can put my wet projects over there to dry. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to add a couple of drops of each of my colors into my palette, and then I'm going to use uh, a pivot and add a little bit of water. The colors I'm using today are moss, teal, dandelion, pink, strawberry, purple, and indigo. And you need to give each of the bottles a little bit of a shake before you start transferring the color. And there is what my pipit is. It's uh, another way of transferring water. Sometimes I use my spritzer, but uh, one of my spritzers is really strong and it spreads the watercolor people all over my work surface. So that pipit works really great. And I also have a piece of watercolor paper there that I am just uh, sampling my ink on, zooming in for you here so that you can watch me color. And I'm also coloring on top of a piece of paper towel because I don't want any puddles underneath that are going to transfer the color to one of my other buildings when I am working on this. So as we start painting, we do not want to paint any buildings that are beside each other that aren't dry yet because of course the water will, with the watercolor pa uh, paint in it, will wick through and you'll end up with a blend of colors that might be nice and might not. <laughs> Okay, so I've sped this up a little bit, just to 200, so that uh, you can watch me color while I'm talking. And what I'm doing is I'm going to put one entire coat on, and then I'm going to dry it. And then I'll come along with a, another coat to darken it up a little bit. And you can paint yourself into a corner, which happens to me. I get a few of these done, and then I have wet on one or two sides of each one. So just take your heat tool and dry the paint so that you can continue with your painting. And for these pink buildings, I did red on the bottom and kind of blended them together. Now I'm coming in with the yellow and I start this building with the dandelion and I end up not liking the bright yellow. So you'll see a little bit farther down the road, I decide that I'm going to blend the orange and yellow together and it creates kind of a terracotta which is really a pretty color and I use that. Okay, so onto the teal building and teal is quite dark as you can see here. And I think I do go back and uh, lighten it up a little bit by adding a little bit of water to it. And also if you decide that this is too dark, well, it's still wet, you can uh, flick some of it up with a paper towel. So just dab a paper towel on it, it will pick up some of the color. And you may have to add some clean water to do that. Okay, so here's where I blend in some orange and I decide I like that color better. So just off to the left, what I do is I eventually take a see these two colors and I blend them together to make my terracotta color because I don't like the orange and I don't like the yellow. <laughs> Not for this application anyway. Okay, so now I'm bringing in my moss green and I've decided to do this little building down in the corner here. This is just a nice soft green. 
and I wanted it in my palette of colors. So when I was designing my colors and deciding what I wanted to do, I had to decide what type of day I thought this was going to be. And to me, this is early morning, and I'm going to have the silhouette in front, then I'm going to have two layers of my uh, city, and then there's going to be a little piece that we put in the back, and it's going to let yellow shine through all of the windows, like it looks early in the morning when the sun is just coming up and the bright yellow is shining off all of the windows in the city. So I got a clean paper towel and stuck it behind what I'm painting. I decided that it must be kind of hard for you to see that with all that blue blob in behind it. So sorry about that. I should have started with that in the beginning. So now I'm going through and I'm kind of doing my second coat on a couple of these and using my heat tool to dry in between and checking a few colors because I'm going to be adding I'm going to put a red house right here beside the pink one. I'm not sure if that was a good move or a bad move, but um, I'm into it. So we're dedicated now. And I found the red was a little bit diluted, so I added some more watercolor to it just to darken it up a little bit. That seems to have done the trick. So I'm just finishing off my last building in Indigo, just adding a coat there, and then I will heat set that and set it aside for a few minutes. Um, I tried to touch up my teal and ended up darkening it, so that's where I added some water and just a piece of paper towel to lighten it up again. Let's start on the back tall buildings. So these are a little bit taller, so I've decided to use a little bit darker colors because they're going to be behind the other ones. So I'm letting it get darker and darker as it goes back. So starting with the purple, then I'm adding some teal. I use my moss green and these buildings are a lot taller and you don't need to go all the way down to that bottom white piece because the, uh, the city piece in front is going to cover most of it, but you do need to pull it down a little bit like to where I've got it pulled right now. And so I'm just checking to see which colors I wanna use for this one. And I'm back to my nice terracotta, then my indigo, and I'm coming back with some moss green, living on the edge because <laughs> that terracotta over on the right is still wet. So you see, I finally get smart. <laughs> I heat set it and then I come back in and finish it so that the ink doesn't blend. Just trying to butt right up against the other colors. Checking. So uh, one thing you want to try is not get the buildings behind to be exactly the same colors as the building in front. And I'm also was checking to see how much of this I have to color because of course the little building that is in the front the city window fancy frame is not as wide as the trifold edge city dies that I'm going to be putting in behind. So I'm just darkening up a couple of my colors here, putting a second and a third layer on because I want them darker. I'm adding a second layer to that terracotta, but that terracotta ends up not being in the picture. And so you'll see here, I've got two teal buildings in the center, one in front of the other, and I'm just testing out the one. So I need to move it over. Uh, so that they're not stacked right behind each other. So this is where I decide that I'm going to do the terracotta way over on the left hand side and I need to give that a couple of coats of paint. There we go. So now I don't have stacked buildings that are the same color, which is what I was going for. All right, so now we're going to do the piece in front and we get going here. I decide I'm going to use black and I paint it and I dry it and I carry on and I left it in the video to show you what I did. In the end, I ended up going and getting a black piece of cardstock and just die cutting it and and uh, white embossing my sentiment on the front because this one got kind of streaky. Okay, so now it's time to do the piece behind. So I've got a four quarter, five and a half piece of white cardstock, hammer mill, 100. Uh, pound and I'm going to be using some of the inks from Hero Arts. These are the Hero Hue Reactives and I've got Blue Hawaii Splash and Lemon Drop and I'm using the blending brushes and I'm putting as much yellow as I can behind the buildings and then there's going to be a little bit of blue sky up behind and you saw that I used a pencil 
just a very, very light pencil mark to let me know where the opening was in the front piece on the card so I knew where to add these. Uh, one thing you don't want to do is get an overlap of that yellow and blue because then you're going to have green in your sky. So be very careful about that. Okay, so then you want to test it out and see where you're going. You want to stick that second part of the city in behind to make sure that you have enough yellow to see the see how the windows light up. Isn't that cool? Love it. Okay, so here's my alternate black piece that I have white heat embossed the sentiment on. And the sentiment was from the My Monthly Hero December stamp set. And I'm stacking this up just to see where everything goes. And I'm going to have to uh, add this by layer and then I'm going to have to trim out a few pieces to make sure that it fits in behind. So what I'm doing here is I'm laying it where I want it on the front, adding a pencil mark on the back of the black and that's going to let me know where to add my tape. And this is quarter inch score tape. It's really, really nice and strong and I like to use it, especially on watercolor paper where I've gotten it wet and it might warp. It really helps hold it down, keeps it flat and makes your finished project look nice and professional. On the back of the trees, I'm just adding small pieces of foam square because I want the trees to pop up just a tiny little bit. I don't want them right up against the city. So I'm adding a little bit of depth to my card by doing this. So just remove those protective covers. And our first piece is about to get glued down to the card front. So lay that in there. Make sure you've got the white covered in the front of the building. Next, we're going to add the second layer of our buildings in the background. So again, I'm just kind of auditioning this. It's a dry audition, using a pencil to decide where I'm going to snip this off and popping that into my tonic trimmer and just getting rid of that piece. And this time, well, get your sharp scissors out and get rid of that piece of black. You don't need it. And trim as you go, because sometimes you'll end up with two or three layers and it makes it kind of hard to trim. Again, I'm adding this in the back just to make sure I've got it where I want it. And I'm using the Tombow multi-purpose glue for this one because it takes a few minutes for it to dry. So it's going to give me the chance to wiggle it around and get it exactly where I want it before I let it set. Now we're going to add our sky and we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to get it in there while it's dry fitting, figure out where we're going to position it, uh, figure out what we have to trim off, uh, get the yellow coming through the buildings and again I am just marking and I'm going to do a little bit of snipping on two sides just so I don't have any overhang that I have to trim and I'm adding the score tape to it just finishing off taking that last little protective cover off and attaching it to the back of the card. We're going to be attaching this to an A2 top folding white card base and I stick it into the corner of my score buddy just to keep everything even and get it on there nice and straight. If you enjoyed today's project please consider giving me a thumbs up and a subscribing and underneath this video is a link to all the supplies that I use for today's card. Also a link over to my blog where you can download a printable PDF file for today's project. Thanks so much for joining me and until next time, toodles!